Hello again guys, this is David and Matt from Livewire and my oh my, more and more leaks are just popping up all over the internet regarding the latest Call of Duty instalment, which is set to be called Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. In this video we are going to be bringing you the news of the legacy edition of the game which, now prepare for this guys, it's set to include a remastered Call of Duty 4! In our opinion this is and always will be the greatest Call of Duty game ever made. We will be discussing all the online maps we might expect to see in this edition, speculating at what we can expect from this exciting remastered edition of COD 4 and bringing back all the nostalgia feels from way back from when you'd run home from school as fast as you can, get with your mates in a private lobby and start glitching the hell out of every single map. Before we get into the maps we can expect, scroll down and tell us in the comments what maps you'd like to see included. And tell us your stories of when you played these memorable maps from Call of Duty 4. Let's get right into it then. In the fine print of this week, it is revealed that there will only be 10 of the original maps from Call of Duty 4 in the new game. But don't worry guys, 10 maps is still enough to get very excited about. The maps we can expect to see are the classics, so I think we can automatically assume they won't be including the maps that came in later DLC. Creek, you are still missed to this day. So what will the 10 maps be? So one of the maps we expect to see in Call of Duty 4 is of course Backlot. I'm sure we all have fond memories of playing around in old school mode with friends, jumping out the map or even onto the palm trees would just make endless fun. So I hope for all of these maps that Activision actually keeps these glitches in and of course old school mode that made half of them possible. Backlot also led to some great encounters in the public lobbies too. The constant warfare between the huge building at the end of the map and the tall one in the middle meant for tactical skirmishes and the flanking was just fantastic between these different levels. I also vividly remember uh, camping out in the construction building basement, that was a lot of fun. Another favourite of ours is Crash. The brilliant map is easily recognisable by its crashed helicopter that dominates the centre of the map. I remember players scrambling desperately to take cover in the wreckage when there was crossfire happening between the various buildings and the alleyways around the map. This map was particularly great in search and destroying because teams could deploy excellent flanking tactics that would either involve sweeping behind the back of one of the smaller buildings or behind the wall if the objective was in that location. Domination in this map was on the opposite end of the spectrum. It was very horrific. When you were going between the three points, it made for some epic and memorable war zone experiences that we cannot wait to play again. Let's face it, we all remember Crash, and for good reason. I hope this makes it in. Another map we'd love to see is Crossfire. Crossfire was basically just a long road that few people would actually run down because simply put, they would just die in the crossfire between the various shops and the buildings that dominated either side of the streets. This map was a sniper's paradise if I remember correctly, where they would show off their skill by taking out anyone in their sights along the long road and in the opposing buildings. I do remember one of my favourite spots for sniping was right on the corner where the, uh, the road would turn to the left and there was a building there with half the wall broken away, you could just sit in prone mode and just snipe all the way up the street for days. But teams would have to manoeuvre through the various buildings and back alleys to successfully achieve victory in this map. This map, like Backlot, was another one that allowed for some great glitching, like climbing up that ruined building at the very end of the map, jumping on top of the washing machine, the player would then be able to cross the invisible bridge and onto the top of the building. Pipeline was a great map that players should have been able to spend hours of their lives on without getting bored once. The image that sticks in my head in this map is people would always get 7 killstreak helicopters and just tear through the glass roof buildings with it. The two large warehouses in the centre of the map often saw the main concentration of fighting. The north warehouse had a small room which players could even hide in and ladders that could lead to a catwalk which granted access to the roof. The south warehouse had a U shaped upper level looking over the ground floor and office rooms. Additionally, there was a rather cool entrance to the underground tunnel. This tunnels lead to the northwest and the northeast sections of the map so teams could really use the map to plan different flanking manoeuvres and points of attack. This map's layout supported a variety of playing styles, with the warehouses and tunnels encouraging frantic close quarter action and of course some long range sniping. Something that used to really annoy me about that map, there was like a base camp spawning at the top of the map, you'd have to run down a hill and there was like lots of trees and grass everywhere and enemies would just genuinely sit in your own spawn area in the grass and just wait for you to spawn and shoot you, you'd have to literally run the gauntlet of bullets and explosions just to get to where the fighting was. It was crazy. Overgrown was my absolute favourite, especially for a particular game mode we used to play with all our friends back in the day. It was a wide open map with plenty of vegetation and cover spots, perfect for ambushing unsuspecting enemy players. 
The map had three distinct sections, a farm located on the northern half of the map containing a large barn and two fields that provide cover and concealment. It also had a curved street lined with buildings on the southern half of the map and running horizontally through the map was a big river with two bridges on the east and western sides of the map crossing over it. This map was favoured by snipers because of the map's size and plentiful vegetation, allowing the snipers to blend in with the background. I know the map is big, but it's a fan favourite that just cannot be ignored. Come on guys, you didn't think we'd leave out Shipment, did you? Shipment was one of the smallest maps in the Call of Duty series. Because of its small size, it was used mostly for small and quick games such as Free For All. And my god, those games were brutal. Much death happened and games on this map just turned into mass graves littered with explosions and bullet fire from every angle imaginable. And trust me, if somehow an enemy landed a kill streak, then beware because the map provides little to no cover from an aerial offensive. So yeah, you are likely going to get blown up by the countless airstrikes and mown down from a helicopter. Enjoy! Now of course you cannot forget wet work, mainly because this map was a lot different from the others in Call of Duty 4, taking place exclusively on a large ship. The layout on this map was pretty much symmetrical, both teams spawn either at the bow or the stern of the ship with the upper levels providing a good view of the entire map for that long range play. Now of course the hardest part of this map was just making your way to the enemy camp without being sniped from up in one of those towers. The middle of the map was defined by two bridges. The deck area between each of the bridges and spawn areas consists of shipping containers creating a close quarters environment. These areas lead to the centre of the deck where most of the fighting occurred. There were shipping containers on the port and starboard sides of the ship, creating a passage around the middle area. The middle of the deck is fairly open with only a few crates for cover, encouraging a mix of close to mid range combat. Vacant was another great map for flanking manoeuvres and for outsmarting your opponents. It was a reasonably small map that was set in an abandoned office building. The main building contains various pieces of office equipment, cubicles and random debris lying around that allowed for decent cover. But the most memorable thing in this map for me was a tiny courtyard in its centre, where 9 out of 10 times plays with core and airstrikes, especially in domination when one of the flags was centred in it. Outside you could find multiple destroyed vehicles, abandoned shipping containers and a large oil tank. The map caters to multiple play styles. Most of the map plays host to intense close quarter combat, due to most of the map's area composing of indoor areas. The outdoor areas though usually serve as flanking positions but contain more long range combat. Ah yes, Ambush. Ambush was probably one of my favourite maps because it actually gave you that true warzone setting with you know the two sides of the map being separated by the, the road in the centre that players would have to cross really quickly in order to get behind enemy lines. Both spawn points provided ample sniping positions which allowed for some great sniping matchup between players. You'd always get those you know destroyed buildings you could somehow get into and then shoot across the map to the other players. Good times. There was also those sewer tunnels in the map, they were kinda largely overlooked because it's a secret way to get across the road and it also protects from like bombs and airstrikes. Stealth classes worked particularly well in this map because it offered a lot of cover, dark corners and high grass. And as I said before, many of the buildings encouraged camping. But be warned though, on team deathmatch the spawn points swap sides frequently meaning the enemy players may end up in the middle of your own spawn point. Last but not least, the final map we can expect to see and not so secretly want to see is Block. Block primarily consists of two large Soviet style apartment buildings and the courtyard in between, as well as the high rise flats surrounding these two. Fighting on this map usually centred on long range sniper battles across the courtyard and close quarter skirmishes in the two long buildings. Unfortunately, the gigantic empty swimming pool is absent from the major battles, as it was too far away from the action. You have to love this map because of suppressed memories of failing to jump in the statue in the middle. We all did it, come on. Alright guys, so that was me and Matt having a wee look at the latest Call of Duty leaks which have now in the actual making of this video been confirmed by Infinity Ward, so crazy times. But yeah, Call of Duty 4 Remastered, what do you guys think? It just gets me right in the nostalgia and I can't wait to get my hands on it. These are just some of the maps that we expect to see of course because we enjoyed them, they were our favourite maps. But obviously there was probably some maps that you guys preferred, so if you want to talk about them you can leave that in the comments below, we'll be sure to respond. We'd love to hear all of your Call of Duty 4 stories, and if you guys have not played Mike Myers and Overgrown, then you seriously got to look it up on YouTube, it's just one of the funnest game modes ever. You can click on the For Honor playlist here, this playlist covers all you need to know about the new and upcoming game For Honor by Ubisoft. 
And if you guys like Game of Thrones, then you can check out our extensively detailed episode 1 review, which Matt and Ali did for the first episode of season 6. Also feel free guys to leave a little like on the video, it really helps us out, every YouTuber bloody says that, but it genuinely does. And until next time, we will catch you later!